Okay. All right. Okay. So, start the presentation. The, uh, so this is the July presentation for the Historic Highway 99 Association. And this, this one will be covering San Gregonio Pass along Highway 99. So let's see what we got here, share screen, and go. Okay. So making sure, can everybody see the um, title screen? Yes, we can. Okay. All right then. So let's start this. Okay. There we go. Okay. So away. All right. So it's kind of an overview map, kind of a long section of highway, more than just the pass. It's actually going to be get photos coming from this area. This is, well, this is Thousand Palms. This is Edom, Garnet, Whitewater, and of course the Whitewater River, State 111, which I'll point this out in a minute. We'll, we'll get there. <laughs> Cabazon, Banning, Beaumont, and all the way up to, well, the edge is Cala Mesa. We'll be covering the highway through here, the highway from Banning, or sorry, from Beaumont East is formerly US, not only US 99, but also US 60 and 70. At, U at, um, at Beaumont, US 60 kicked west and US 70 and 99 followed the rest of the way. And of course, State 111 came through here, but did not, did not work. So covering these sections here. So the kind of the basics. So section of highway from Edom to Garnet. Originally, it was the first section of paving in that area, January 1922, 16 feet wide. Now that's not very wide, even cars were pretty much taking up the whole you know, bulk of a highway at that point, but it's a big improvement from dealing with all of the well, the sands and washes and everything else crossing that section of the desert. Of course, traffic ever growing. The extra strip was done in May of 26. It was basically they widened it with a four. Usually, it was a four foot slab on one side. In other areas, it flipped. Or, I mean, it, either on one side or it was on, you know, a little bit on both sides. There's actually one section you can see it transitioning. Of course, the original alignment then was bypassed in 52 by an expressway following what is now the 10. And as a bonus, in late 19, section of asphalt was removed, revealing a very beautiful section of concrete. So it's kind of basics here. Varner Road and Garnett Road were US 99 or the main highway from 26 to 52. And then the I-10 alignment from 52 on. A little bit more of a zoom in of the Garnet Hill area. This is showing the alignment as an expressway. Uh, quite sure why the map does this, which is interesting because this was 99. You can see this is the 10 today. Here's the, uh, the, the Indian Canyon interchange, former site, of, well, current site, old site, whatever of the uh, Palm Springs. Southern Pacific Station and a Y. And of course, this section here. This is the original alignment merging briefly and then going off on its own to basically be the eastbound lanes or southbound lanes. Not quite sure the exact date of this photo, but this is 1930s. A few things of uh, interest here. So here's Here's the 1922 concrete. Here's the 1926 concrete. Asphalt added later. Here's Garnet Hill. And of course, the, the pass. You can also see the original striping. 
and then they later striping that was added. Here's that same concrete today. Paint, striping, uh, and then of course the widened section. This asphalt is partly old, but mostly new. My understanding of it is that the roadway was that, that particular area, this is west of Indian Canyon, no, I'm sorry, west of Palm, that um, they're planning on putting some sort of a development and scraped off all the concrete, all the asphalt for what reason, I don't know, but did a really nice job of it and just left it. Yes, there's a motorcycle there. So you can see the long strip here, beautiful section of concrete, and in very good condition too, surprisingly good condition. But close up of the widening slabs, you can see a, a uh, well, the edge point here. Now this is a bit interesting here. It's something I haven't seen before. This was basically Arizona crossing, dry, you know, low water crossing of a creek. There is a stream that, well, they, uh, a channel that crosses here. But what's interesting is on the downstream side, there's extra concrete. So this is the widening, or you can still see here on the north side of the paving. You get this. This was done just a, a extra protection for water crossing. At the freeway here, this, uh, but you, and during expressway days, it did merge here. You can see the striping remaining. This is the asphalt that was put in in the 40s. And this is the original shoulder plus concrete. Further down, this is now on Garnet Road. You'll notice that the, or Garnet Road, you'll notice Paint striping here, as well as now the widening is on the other side. What's interesting here is, let's see, where's the, if you look carefully here, <laughs> sorry, you can see the widening strip transitioning to the other side. This is due to the the curve that the, high, the alignment goes going around the hill. But it's interesting seeing a transition sides here. Close up view of the vestigial striping at this point, which created just enough uh, of a barrier to retain some of the old asphalt. And this asphalt is from late 40s just prior to the expressway. So a little bit closer view, you can see the widening strips, 1922, 1926. So skipping ahead just a little bit. Something here. So the Whitewater Bridge, longest bridge on 99 in Riverside County. Completed in 23, bypassed in 52. Modified it for the new alignment was modified again in 67 when everything, when it, the highway was upgraded to I-10. Here you can see the vast difference in alignment. And the connections for the expressway. And the bridge. Multi-span and let's see here. Not sure if it's visible here. I cannot see it very well here, but it's on the, one of the girders date stamp. You know, because I like to hide it back then. view from the other side. It's bridge is beautifully intact. And the 
again, the 1922 concrete widened and hard railing. Nice long run of it too. Close up of the, but I'm not quite sure of the actual term for it. I'm sure I've really found one. I call it faux wooden. Pretty much guarantee the bridge is either from the teens or early 20s with the style railing. So there are exceptions, very weird exceptions, but there are exceptions. It's got this, it looks like wooden railing. I'm not sure how quite to describe it. Really. Here's a photo from, let's see, I believe this is about 1940. Earlier. Basically what they did in this one is they oiled the, they, they, they treated the shoulders. So the shoulders are nice and smooth here versus the uh, kind of what it looks like now. This is a photo of from about 1953 that shows the expressway bridges crossing uh, Whitewater River. These bridges are still here. They've been widened and incorporated into Interstate 10 about 19, you know, 1967. Okay. And I feel like I'm going fast here. Did anybody have any questions at this point? Nope. I'm actually following along on uh, Google Earth as you're as you're doing this. Okay, just just making sure. <laughs> <laughs> the original okay. the original bridge you said is was built in 1923, correct? Yes. Okay. And this one here. Unfortunately, I don't have any good pictures of it, at least offhand, but on one of the girders, I'm pretty sure it's this one, you can see 1923 imprinted on it, versus okay. it being at the end of the railing. Yeah, because I walked around there quite a bit, a couple of times, I was hoping I could find a date stamp or something on it, and I was never successful, obviously it was hiding from me, so, okay. Yeah, if you, kind of a rule from, from that period is if you can't find one, on the deck, look on the girder. Like even the uh, the Donner Summit Bridge has it on top of the arch. Okay. Because of course, people on the highway are going to see that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and usually, you usually if there's multiple arches or multiple spans, it's usually on the center span when they do that. Yes. At least with Big Sur, they put it on the bridge or the on, towards the deck. So, State 111, the other desert cities junction. <laughs> I always thought that was an amusing, it, no mention, of, there's Indio, other desert cities. 10, I'm pretty sure it goes to something called Phoenix, but you know, no mention of it there. Uh, but the original intersection was about 1.1 miles east to, at Tipton Road. Um, and then it was moved to, near its current location in 40. The original location, the original intersection was at gray. It uh, basically had a left on from northbound or yeah, northbound 111 to northbound 99 was a left on ramp. Southbound 99 dove under that, so it's a bit interesting, but grade separated. The old alignment was partially, or the, There was another road that they used, which you can st still see remnants of, for north to basically the other the other movements. But originally there was a great there was an uh, underpass on 111 at the tracks. Now there's an overpass. So here's a location. Early 50s. See the grade separation here. Can't really see it too well with this photo, but State 111 shield and a stack of shields here 99, 60, 70. 
signage for Indio and Palm Springs. And distance speed whitewater. Old curbing. Now, this describes it even better. This is from California Highways and Public Works. When they were redoing the highway, you can see the underpass. There was another road added in right about here for west or for west or whatever to south. And then also that this direction here from north to east. Did not include that map, of course. So the th Interstate 10 today actually dives a little bit south at this location. The old alignment, you can kind of make out where it was, but the right of way has this huge gap on the northern side where you can see it. So Cabazon, 1922, not 19... Uh, 1922, original 16 foot slab, widened in 26, pretty much the same story most of the way through the pass. But in 34, they had made improvements to the bridges and some to the grade. But that didn't last very long, so 39, or late 39 to mid 41, upgraded it to an expressway from 111 to Bannock. And then in 64, it was modified yet again. Bypassed is, eh, it was, the expressway was partially incorporated. Like this. You can see you're crossing one of the creeks, another bridge here. Notice the railing. Interesting is this bridge over here. It's a little bit brighter view of it. See the nice wooden railing approaching here. So this is the original side. This was, this eventually became southbound 99 with northbound now occupying the eastbound lanes of Interstate 10. Where if you look at this bridge here, see the 1940 bridge. Where it's been widened. More importantly, if you look So if you look here, this is not a normal end cap for the this style bridge. If it were built in this, if built in 67, it wouldn't have this and it would not have this arch. So in 67, they took off the old railing, which was probably similar to this, removed the end cap, put on the 60s style, but retained the arch, and just left the old bridge. And if you look carefully here, be something to look out for when you're dodging trucks going through the pass here. This is the original bridge deck, or at least the you know part of it. But this is the section from the 40s, and here's the section from 67. And again, here's the old end cap. A closer view of the railing gives you some idea. This is the end cap. And why this was retained, I'm not sure, but it may have had some sort of structural aspect to it. So what I meant when I said bypass was that part of it was incorporated. Here, going a little bit further west, you can see, well, this is a section that was obviously resurfaced, but here's the widening work and here's the original width. So even after all these years, you can still see that there is a 16 foot slab of concrete from 1922 and the 1926 widening. 
And then there's this. This is a section that was actually bypassed. This is uh, basically a, an abandoned section of what used to be northbound US 99. This is part of the North 1940 Expressway. This is just before, um, well, Cabazon exit. And in fact, let's make out part of a dinosaur. So here's the overpass at Cabazon. You can see a bit of the, the shoulder and the lane that has been since bypassed. So we're looking at out back here, this section here. So this roadway here, the original alignment, east, eastbound 10, and then the road through Cabazon. So this is a section that was bypassed. You can see here's the expressway between Cabazon and Banning. Uh, some, let's see, this is the, this is the original, well, the expressway days and partial freeway. This is from the uh, about 1956, 58. Oh. I did not see that. A second here. And there we go. Okay. All right. So you can see quite a bit of changes here. Cabazon itself was, of course, bypassed. And then it doesn't show up here, but there is definitely a roadway here until they added, oh, there was a, a the, until a uh, traffic circle was added here. It was actually a little complicated and a little weird to go westbound on the highway and then it's almost go the wrong way down the road to get onto this frontage road. Not a very good shot, but this is the highway through Cabazon. Not many changes really to today. I mean, the alignment is pretty much as it was. This is just after, it's so July of 41. So this is after expressway work was completed. That's the railroad water tank up there? Yes. Okay, because I know the piers are alongside the road there for it. This is what it was before. So yeah, very visible water tank there. So this would have been the pavement that was, this is basically the 1934 pavement at this point, burying the 1922 pavement. And then here it is again. So there's a section of highway that is bypassed. Okay. This should help. Okay, so first, just going back to Cabazon briefly, you can see the abandoned lanes here. Dinosaurs, east end of Cabazon, going through town. So you're mentioning about the water tank. There's space for that thing. Oh, I saw it. Michael, this is my first time to attend. Can I ask a rookie question? When you say dinosaurs, what, what does that mean? Oh, the um, 
kind of it, well, it was created after Highway 99, but it's the there's really large dinosaurs there, <laughs> like models. Oh, okay. You know the um, yeah, come see Dino the dinosaur and Barney and whoever else. Road uh, roadside oh. attractions. You talking yes. about? Okay. All right. Thank you. I thought you were referring to the state of the pavement. Thank you. Oh yeah, no problem. Okay, so uh, okay, what's this? Okay. Okay. So I didn't put a photo of it. This is the west end of Cabazon. And you can see, of course, the traffic circle here. What's interesting is here's a section of concrete. This is part of the original highway, which you can see it lines up well with, with the uh, southbound lanes of 99 and follow that little frontage road over. But what's awkward is that before, let's point this out since we're here. Well, before it was easier. When they added the traffic circle, had to go around and then like go almost through the tracks. It's very weird to access it. But I've actually seen trucks take this for I'm not sure what reason, because two of the culverts have been removed. But you can see that here's one culvert that's been removed, so it's quite a dip there. But you can see full width pavement. This continues as frontage road. Here's the second culvert that's been removed. Continues as frontage road with striping. There's a rough intersection here. And continues all the way, almost all the way to Banning. This bridge, I'm going to show, is really cool. It's a San Gorgonio Wash Bridge. Let me get there. Okay. I mentioned where the where the dip was. You would know more about this than I would, but that wouldn't possibly be a washout where they just eliminated the culvert and just dropped the pavement, would it? It could be. I've never really found any any specific, but it looks like just the way they built it. But, and and mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure it was removed during freeway construction because it doesn't seem to be any real good reason for it to have actually washed out. My guess is that because of its proximity, to the freeway, it was easier just to eliminate it. So otherwise, you would have had to have widened the culvert, and then that would have actually they would have had to basically either incorporate it into the freeway or continually maintain it. They could have washed out, but I I think pretty sure it was removed for the freeway construction. I still haven't had a chance to review the plans for that yet. Very well, uh, the general appearance of the grade seems to be pretty pretty straight and level and and i know the traffic speeds weren't like they are now but uh i would assume that based on the rest of the grade that it would you know that's kind of a, a dip like that would be kind of kind of abrupt even for back then so I yeah it would, definitely I, is <laughs> abrupt after today. The, uh, yeah after the construction of 10 that was probably like a afterthought or whatever and obviously the traffic level had gone away and so there was no need to maintain that, that uh, stable grade. So you can see here these you know white striping although this white striping would have been just separating lanes. Interesting point here is you notice there's a lot of curving going with well, a lot of lines leading off here. That well, we'll get, let's see. We'll get back to that. I'll, I'll flip back to that. This is actually a part of the original banning interchange 
with um, the East Banning interchange with the expressway, not the freeway. So I was mentioning about that bridge over St. Gorgonio Wash. So here's some nice railing approaching it. This actually, this goes back to the 40s. It's com more common in the 50s, but this actually goes back to the 40s. Here's the bridge crossing, nice span. Not quite a smaller version of the white water, but same basic railing. 1925, on the, on the uh, girder, you can see, this is slightly different here, this is actually widened. You see the work here, this was widened. This is the bridge on Interstate 10. You can see a slight arch for the 1940 uh, expressway. The bridge itself kind of has a little bit of a rise there. But the bridge itself, this was uh, early 30s. It was actually widened in the early 30s. They kept the original railing for some reason, or at least the same style, although they modernized the end caps. It's a very unusual setup. So this is kind of going back to a little bit earlier. You can see the bridges, which concrete railing. In fact, this is the, sorry for skipping around here. This is actually the um, bridge I showed earlier where you can see the 19, you can go three way. It's kind of cool. This was before. Now, here you can see the rise here. This is the this is the uh, San Gorgonio Wash Bridge. This bridge is still there, albeit the railing is obviously gone and the, the bridge deck is still intact. And here it is before. It's a very plain, a very clean 1940 date stamp. This is just before banning. You can see the trucks at the uh, way station. So banning itself, I'll show more of the interchange. So not quite, not skipping that. It's paved, paved in, that, in 1922, widened in 1925. Same style where they added the extra concrete. Uh, four lanes in 41. And it was bypassed from 22nd to the East End in, 50, in May of 56 and July of 56, eastbound and westbound. The freeway itself was extended from 22nd to bypass Beaumont in August of 62. And then the, what I'll call the, well, there's two ramps that were The ramps that were at each end of Fanning were modified. Here's a nice aerial photograph, 1962. This show this will basically be the zoom in further. So the curving pavement or paving that I was pointing out, here's the culvert. Here's the curve. Basically, what happened is that you were going for traffic going eastbound on Ramsey, and you wanted to go west on the freeway. You got onto the freeway, did a U turn, and then now you're going westbound. So, that curve that you saw in the paving was actually a part of the almost a U turn. This ramp is still partially in use. And then this is the, called the oddball interchange at 22nd Street. Here's the west off ramp and the east off ramp. At one point, the freeway ended here. 
and just merged right on to Ramsey, continuing on to sixth. You can also see here the original bridges. This most of this frontage road was wiped out or heavily modified when the when this was upgraded to eight lane Interstate 10. So it's a section of the expressway just after they widened it and well, widen it to an expressway, sorry, between Banning and Beaumont. You see, just going through, this is the old, this is before. Old culvert at the east end of Banning. Still haven't figured out what this concrete is here, but it's not old highway. This is not structural, like you could put cars on it type of concrete, or at least, or at least you wouldn't use the roadway. I found aerial photography that confirmed that the expressway ended just to the east. So with that in mind, Banning was the only section of Tulane until 1956, between, well, for many miles. As 1940 culvert. Now that photograph that I showed earlier, it's not very good for and after here, but this hill and here and this swale here. Here's the hill, here's the swale. You can still see the differences in rise here. So this is the added side again, 1940. So the old, pardon the uh, watermark there, couldn't find it one without it. Old postcard that I found years ago, scanned, and now I don't know where the postcard is. But this was the former exit. You can see US 60, 70, 99 business on this sign, exit for banning, and of course, 60, 70, 99. If you look, back here. And kind of, I really wish I could zoom in more, but this is the sign bridge. So you can see this is the exit for Penny. A little bit different. See, this is the original version of it actually left off and the freeway merging down to Ramsey Street, and of course the former East End. So it was just central banning that was bypassed in 56. Not much to see here, unfortunately this sign is gone, but that is an auto club sign. Not sure, the, not sure the age of it. And unfortunately, this whole pole has been replaced as well as the sign. Don't know the status of it, but this was at second and Ramsey. Got a nice porcelain enamel auto club. So with Beaumont, originally followed, the original alignment followed 6th Street to Grace to 5th, which was a bit different. Then they, it basically now just follows out sixth. A uh, little bit different history. It was paved with a 20 foot slab of concrete initially in 23. It didn't have to go through the two steps. In 41, it was shifted onto sixth west of Grace. And the junction with US 60 was channelized. A lot of, a lot of stuff happened in the, about that period. Straight separated in 51 at the interchange. By upgraded to freeway in 62, modified yet again in 72. Here's the grade separation from 52. This is Grace. So the original alignment, west on 6th, south on Grace, and west on 5th, which lines perfectly with outbound 99. You can see how it was modified yet again, a 
obli almost obliterating entirely that section of pit. And we have this. So this is a photograph from 30s. I wish I had the date on this thing. Did not write that down. So here you can see the curve, very obvious. Sixth, sharp down, or this is California, sharp down over to fifth. Nineteen forty. There you go. And the original junction here at uh, US 60 and US 99. Here's the arch for Beaumont, and the original bridge. Actually, no, this wouldn't, this was not 1940. This was, this is before. Because this bridge was replaced in 39. That bridge is actually, the, the old, the new bridge is still there. Are those the piers that are on the north side of the bridge that cross over on each, each bank of uh, where the tracks are? You can still see piers and kind of remnants of the yes. bridge foot. Uh, okay. I may have included photos. I'm not sure. You can see this is the bridge. This is the junction before they, well, after they modernized it. Nice US highway shields there. Would love to get my hands on all of those, plus the auto club here. <laughs> And before the aerial photograph that I just showed showed this. See, here's the original concrete. But no signage is pretty much the same. The arrows, obviously, they modified somewhat, but so here, there's the arch. Here's the current bridge for uh, westbound State Highway 60, then of course US 60. This is now painted green. Give a good perspective here between the old bridge and the new one. This is of course US 60, not of course not 99, but major junction and the arch again for Beaumont. So, I'm just sorry, eastbound 60. No, it is westbound. I'm on the north side. So, yeah, here you can see that it very plainly that I mean, complete with the kind of ribs in the concrete. And yes, those piers. Yes. So now you can see what the bridge looked like. Pretty basic, very narrow too, but it was definitely an improvement over, I believe the grade, there was a grade crossing to the south. Now, the one thing is that, yeah, and the, the, this was, this improvement here was done at the same time the uh, US 60 was realigned for the Badlands. Yeah, and I can see the, well, I can see those piers. I'm on the Google Earth here, here and I can see the piers uh, that you just showed. Uh, and then uh, also, just on the east side of the railroad tracks, a smidgen of the old alignment. That. This yes. Is that old alignment. Complete with concrete and a bit of asphalt. This is US 60, but, you know, still original. That's, that's what I'm looking at from a little higher view, but yes. Yeah. Now there was a day I was, I was in the area and I was like, I'm, I, I make, I'm, I'm making the walk and did. Looking towards the, towards the bridge, or at least the bridge site. And so this is just a slight layer, 1953. Quite a bit of changes here. Still see the old alignment. You can still see the arch. Still an arch there in 53. 
And here's the old alignment. You can see it still lines up well. But now it's grade separated. And you have this going on here. Nice section of expressway. Which was just built. <laughs> And going even further, 62. So now you see freeway, freeway itself ending just after you go past or going west of Beaumont. So you can see how much it modified and partially obliterated the section of Beaumont itself. This over here we'll get to. These bridges here of San, San Mateo Creek. Here's another shot, 1953. Still see the trace of the old alignment, those curves. Now that the, um, the corners are basically put back in place. Quite a bit, quite a change from 53. 67. And this sign. Unfortunately, this sign has, since, has been replaced, but this sign dated to 1962, complete with US 60. It remained until, I believe, last year, sometime in 20. But those little ears are part of the original US highway shield, and they just stuck a California 60 over it. This one is at the former, well, these have also been replaced. This is Sixth Avenue off on ramp. US 60 is underneath here and Interstate 10, of course, and US 70 and US 99. are buried underneath this panel. Sign of course has unfortunately been completely replaced. As you can see, here's the freeway and now it's just a little post. So Beaumont's Cala is an interesting section. A lot, a lot there as well. Original pavement in 20, 1925, although this time it was in a style called twin slab. It's not really, that's not an official term, but it's instead of one solid slab of concrete, they actually broke up and um, put in proper expansion joints. They did some modifications in 37, upgraded to expressway in 51. Cala Mesa, central Cala Mesa anyway, was bypassed in 51. And then in 65, they made a, additional modifications. This is a culvert originally from 1937. Well, originally 20s, widened in 37. This is on the roadway that goes to um, between San Timoteo and the other road, or that, and then Old US 60. This road, culvert is over here. This is a nice bridge from 1939, I believe. Yep, 39. Continuous recesses, wooden railing. Wooden railing on the other side here. Of course, the metal railing. It's interesting to note, I got a picture of it here, but the east, um, eastbound 10 is actually part of the 1951 expressway. They incorporated part of the expressway into the freeway. So Roberts, Roberts Road, section that is unfortunately of, of Highway 99, that is unfortunately in, in, dan in danger of being destroyed. Not sure when that will happen, but we'll see. But this is Roberts Road. This is a section of almost completely intact 1925 concrete. Bypassed in 1937. This Woodland Avenue, this is now uh, the Cherry Valley Boulevard. Singleton is of course still there. Modern map kind of giving you an idea. This highlighted section is the concrete, remaining concrete on Roberts Road, which is quite 
evident here. Nice run of concrete. So this section has been partially obliterated. This section has been partially obliterated. And then from here on down, this doesn't even exist anymore. This was initially realigned, then removed um, during construction of the shopping center located at uh, Cherry Valley and I-10. Also of note here is the bypass of Calamesa. Now, one thing to point out is that the Calamesa, well, the Calamesa Boulevard exit is actually over here. The freeway now goes out and then comes over. Oops. So here it is in 67. You can see there's definitely been some modifications. Less of the concrete remained by that point, but the alignment remained. And here's the concrete. It's a rather nice section. One hope I have is, you know, I, I know it, it can't be fully saved, but one thought I had is either save a couple of the date stamps or possibly uh, it turned into a recreational trail. Either one of those would at least save some aspect of it. It's a nice run of concrete. There was one time I was walking the whole section to look for date stamps on it and uh, ended up finding 20 bucks. This is one of the date stamps, though. May 9th, 1925. This is covered. But it's got to know where to look. He's in the middle of the lane. This is the future alignment of Roberts Road. I'm not sure where they're going to take it out after here, but let's see what happens. So this other photo was taken a little bit later. You can see a lot more houses here. So I haven't figured out exactly where this was. This is between Banning and, or sorry, Beaumont and uh, Calamesa. So they're treating the shoulders here. Now, Roberts Road goes on the other side of this hill by these power lines. And this 1937 culvert underneath Interstate 10. So a little bit of 99 still remains and is still incorporated into the freeway. Let's see, this is this is Cherry Valley interchange coming up. This is a section of the old expressway that is, or uh, this would, would have been uh, northbound 99, the original side actually. So coming into Calamesa, you can see it was bypassed. This section still remains. There's actually some bridges over here. We'll show those nice concrete here on uh, Dunlap. That at uh, Ukaipa, that's actually still, still concrete. And there's a little bit over here. We'll get to that. This section of roadway here Calamesa Boulevard is um, partially incorporates the former westbound or northbound uh, 99 lanes, complete with original guardrail. A couple of topo maps to give you pers some perspective. Here's Calamesa Bypass, and then Ukaipa, Dunlap. Now this is a comparison between the expressway bypass and the freeway. So expressway, freeway. This roadway here still remains. This is would have been northbound 99. 
can see how the the, uh, the old expressway came up and then went off that way. And so now they just cut it back further south. The north end crossing, I believe this is Wildwood Creek or Wildwood Canyon Creek. This is uh, 1920s culvert, I think with original wooden railing and uh, earlier style, possibly built by the county, uh, bridge culvert. It's kind of a larger structure, not sure quite where you qualify it, but nice railing. And multiple. It's, these steps are more indicative of 1920s, whereas this is more indicative of the teens. You can see in the background here, coming up to Live Oak Canyon Road, nice strip of concrete. I believe these circular marks were done as um, about 1952 when this was being bypassed. This is the old northbound side of the expressway. This concrete, this asphalt dates to, well, this is the 1925 concrete and this is, a 1940, I believe, asphalt um, and other layers. But this was done to help break up the concrete. It's kind of took a very large weight, dropped it on it. That's rather thick, so they didn't do a very good job. But a little bit of concrete sticking out. So they, when the expressway was built, they did modify the alignment a bit. So before I get further on that, I do want to show perspective here. So a couple of things of interest, which I don't really have good photos of. I was mentioning this Cala Mesa Boulevard, part of the expressway. Well, expressways have specific intersections, not driveways abutting all the places. This is one of those old crossings. It was just a ditch along the side of the road, and this is one of the original access points. You go a little bit further, concrete sticking out. So it's a little bit of a curve here, newer culvert. And it's bent out a little bit more here as well. For that matter, just one thing to point out for those in the vicinity, if anybody wants a sea monument, well, the top chunk of one, I spotted it while I was on my motorcycle. It's right here. And I bet it's still there. It's just a chunk of concrete with a C on it. Who's going to take it? Between Cherry Valley and Singleton. It's at this clearing near the pole. So okay. back over to just surpassing. La Mesa, another nice section of concrete. This is Dunlap, Dunlap Road or Dunlap Boulevard. I think it's Dunlap Boulevard. Uh, beautiful section of concrete, not sure how long it's gonna remain, but on the west end, they actually have widened it with additional concrete. So I suspect it may remain, and this is 1928. Nice date stamps there. Station 132, oh, this is 132 plus 32. Um, that means you're 13,232 feet from the end of that section. So 
This would be 13,232 feet from Cala Mesa or the county line. One last view and well, that's it. Okay, let's see. Oh, back to Um, so I said, uh, somebody question what uh, what street? What, what, what was this? What was the photo? And what street were you asking? Lori. Oh, Dunlap. I was Dunlap Boulevard, uh, just west of Oak Glen. Uh, okay, so one thing is, so that basically is the end of the presentation. Um, questions? Looks like uh, yeah. Lori has a question. So, go ahead. <laughs> I think she needs to unmute first. Well, oh, hold on a second. Uh, so, when did it disappear? Sometime, honestly. Oh, that explains um, the microphone. It 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 disappeared sometime in. Let's say probably twenty nineteen. I went every time I went by there, I made you know verify whether or not that was there. So I'm pretty sure it disappeared sometime in 19. Are you talking about Roberts Road or what is the question? Oh no, there's to? um sorry. There's the auto club sign that I showed a picture of in Banning. It looks like it uh, the question was when did it disappear? And I believe it was sometime in 2019. And uh, another question is if any of the foundations left for the arch, I do not believe so. I haven't um, actually huh. uh, really dug deep into that section. But uh, I don't not, I do not believe that the arch any anything remains of the arch. Things were pretty well scra uh, scraped away in that area. Um, yeah, there's not even a trace of where, where it was. I don't know if it's historic so much, but it is a little humorous. I'm looking, I say I've, I've been following on Google Maps through the presentation. It's been real fascinating, you know, just kind of, you know, following along that way. Um, right there on the concrete and Dunlap Boulevard, um, some critter tracks that have embedded themselves in that original concrete for all eternity. <laughs> yeah. I found some yeah. similar bits on, uh, on the ridge route. Dogs. People. That's what this looks like. It looks like it looks like maybe dog prints, but it's it's in that old concrete very clearly. In which section? Let's see. Let me zoom back out again. We're on Dunlap Boulevard, and let's see. Let's find a business here. There's Golden State Recycling, and if you are headed um, eastbound or southbound as it would have been, uh, right where all those, uh, the, the, the parking lot pavement ends, there's kind of a green area right there, there's some trees and it's right there. <laughs> huh. Well, next time I get out that way, I'll have to <laughs> Yeah, it kind of goes at an angle all the way across the uh, uh, southbound lanes or lane actually, but yeah, so like I say, it's not necessarily historic, except for you know some historic dog left their imprint in the concrete forever. It is for the dog, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Yeah. I'm not sure. I wouldn't recommend going looking for the footprints, but it it was it was interesting and humorous. Yeah, no, they um, once I got on the ridge route, I, I there were I think I found at least three or four different types of creatures, and there's even a hoof print somewhere, albeit didn't naturally have horses up there. That was. Probably one of the surveyors. <laughs> <laughs> then, of course, on that on the ridge route, you also have the uh, more infamous three point turn, where somebody in a looks like a Model T drove onto the concrete, realized, "Oops, it's still wet," and a three point oh. turn backed out, and <laughs> it's very poorly covered, so uh. you can still see it very plainly today. Uh, is that north of the what is it? The hotel. Yeah, this well, the, the sec this, that particular section is um, probably at half a mile at most south of um, Tumble Inn. Mm, okay. Pretty close to North End. Yeah. Well, I'd say, uh, Michael, another wonderful presentation. Uh, thank you very much. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm glad we were able to attend. I, um, yeah, there'll be there. Are, so I will also say um, next month um, our presentation will actually be our first guest guest host. Uh, we'll have it. We'll have somebody that's um, that runs the. A nonprofit for a place called Mentryville, which is an old oil boom town just west of Santa Clarita. It's um, well, the, the place itself is actually quite historic. They, there was an oil well there that produced for over 100 years continuously, and um, it also is a, a start. It's where a little. You ever heard of Chevron? Um, I might have heard of that somewhere. Yeah, a little company called Chevron. Well, they got their start there. All right. So yeah, there, it, it, it's quite a quite a place in Pico Canyon. All right. Well, that sounds interesting. And then at some point we'll have uh, somebody from the Lincoln Highway Association talking about the, their stretch of uh, Lincoln Highway and it crossing uh, Highway 99. Might have another uh, talking about the St. Francis Dam, which is a wow. big part of 99 history. That sounds great. Yeah. So still working out the details on those, but there, there will be a lot. <laughs> yeah, that would be really good. I've read up a lot on, on St. Francis Dam. I kind of, um, like I said, I think I mentioned a meeting before I, I, I use, um, I use the, I use that dam as one example of, um, you know how to find a root cause of of uh, of a problem, and um, you know you look back and you see all the uh, you know Mulholland. There's no question about the guy's talent at the time, but he definitely made a few mistakes on that one. Yes, and the one thing that uh, you know I, I got to give the guy credit for is the taking full responsibility. He was the one in charge. He said, "Lay the blame upon me." And the buck stopped there. Yeah, and that that's not that common. <laughs> yeah, especially guys of that kind of stature in that era. It ruined him, but I mean, he still got the LA Aqueduct. That's a very impressive bit of engineering. Yeah, but because of you know the collapse of the Francis Dam, uh, well, other construction projects, other like uh, Hoover, were delayed. Um, but from that point, engineers no longer had final say. Geologists did. Makes a lot more sense. <laughs> and all of geologists and engineers had to be certified by the state. No more, eh, I got a degree, I'm, I'm cool. Okay, but do you actually know anything? 
Or even if you don't have a degree, yeah, I'll build it for you. Well, you got to at least have some training. <laughs> so it, it changed a lot. What is the that I've read in recent times that uh, it's been said that uh, Mulholland didn't actually, wouldn't have been able to aware, be aware of the underground landslide i'm lost on that but it, it was kind of like taking the blame off of him a little bit is there any truth to that well yes and no um there were aspects of the geology that were not as well known at the time so they may not necessarily have found the landslide that was part of the big problem on the was it the east side? East or east side. Yeah, east side. The thing is, though, is wouldn't it be nice if it was just one thing that causes the dam to collapse? In addition to the landslide, you also had poor concrete. You also had a dam that was built too high. Now, they wanted to increase the uh, they want, to oh, yeah. they, want, they want to increase the reservoir, but they yeah. did not increase the base. So they, they increased they, the height. And the yeah, they ta tacked on 20 heavy. feet to the top, tacked on 20 feet to the top, but didn't do any structural changes to the dam itself. Yeah. And that's not going to be any good. It was built on a fault line they knew about. Fault lines by themselves are not necessarily a problem, though. The people that uh, lived below um, Baldwin Hills Reservoir might disagree. <laughs> Baldwin Hills Reservoir uh, collapsed due to a movement of a, along a fault line because of groundwater withdrawal or oil withdrawal. But they still are weaknesses and can be conduits for water. You also had the Francis. Francisquito Formation, which was easily friable, and of course it turned to mud. None of these things are good to put a dam on, no matter how well you took the dam. And well, yeah. Therefore, geologists, right? Yeah. So that so th there's many things, and then it, yeah, it wasn't just one thing. Um, what else? Uh, one thing also thought I might make an announcement. So with our membership, um, we, brought, we now have 20 members, it's still small, but we're getting there, hoping to expand more this year, a lot more this year. Then um, we have members in all states, Highway 99 pass through and Canada. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty much it. And do you have any additional questions? I do actually. There was uh, I lost connectivity right after we got done with the uh, when I was asking about the bridge piers and whatnot at sixty. I was gone for a couple of minutes there. Uh, a little more vague here. What role does San Timoteo Canyon Road play in all of this? Not a whole lot. Um, it, San Mateo Canyon is basically just a road following the tracks. Okay, so it was not any major roadway because I was a little puzzled when I used to examine that bridge and I was trying to figure out how that transitioned around the old bridge. And uh, I, was, I was never able to put the pieces together to figure out. And I was wondering if San Mateo Canyon might have been an, an earlier road prior to uh, 99 or whatnot well from what i found it was one of at least two roads because there were still you know roads that that took you along well the base of the 99 corridor uh, san timoteo canyon bypassed most civilization as did the tracks tracks found the easiest course uh, but even on the earliest maps that I've seen, there's still some sort of a path that roughly follows 99. Okay. 
And when was the uh, the sixty through the Badlands? When when was that constructed? Well, that was originally constructed in the teens, and then in I think nineteen thirty eight or nine, it was uh, basically put on its current alignment. Fun part was in the nineteen fifties. They upgraded that alignment to a four liner and temporarily diverted traffic back onto Jackrabbit Trail. So, if you're able to take Jackrabbit Trail, you can actually see two, in, you know, two phases of construction. You can see the original railing, you can see 50s railing, you can see the original paving, which was more like the asphalt that's on the ridge route. And because of no concrete there, just, just the asphalt. And uh, then you can also see modern or more modern sections, modern 1950s. <laughs> okay. Um, any other questions? Well, I'm good from my end. I'll echo what Mark said. Thank you very much. A very nice presentation, Michael. Right, you're welcome. Have a good night. Thank you. Likewise, same from here. Very nice. Once again, very informative. It's always interesting to uh, to see these. I look forward to the next one again. Well, we'll, we'll definitely keep them going. Always having a lot of fun with these. <laughs> it is. It's really neat. Good night, everybody. Take care. Bye. Uh, 